father of all sins. The devil is the adversary. He is the one that torments and destroys. He is never what he appears to be. He is one who opposes. He is one who actively comes against you in a cunning manner. He has over 5,000 years of experience in dealing with mankind. He is never what he appears to be. He is called Lucifer, the light bearer. He is called Lucifer, the anointed cherub that guards. Satan is a liar. And Jesus tells us this in John 8, verse 44. Isn't it interesting that God's truth brings life and Satan's lies bring death? John 8, verse 44. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. That is the very true nature of Satan. He is the father of lies. He is one that never appears to be what he truly is. Satan never comes in his true form. Have you ever seen a picture of Satan? Any time Satan is depicted in imagery or artwork, he is depicted as an evil horned red creature with horns and a pitchfork. Nowhere in scripture will you find him described to look like this. The Bible is clear. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14 And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. He is described in this Bible as the God of this world. He is described in the Bible as having a kingdom in this world. For the kingdoms of this world were handed to him when Adam fell in the book of Genesis. When Satan took the Lord Jesus Christ on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and offered these kingdoms to him, if he worshipped him, Satan had every right to do so. Satan will one day place his man on on the throne of the kingdoms of this world and this man is none other than the antichrist however he will be defeated when heaven opens in the book of revelation revelation 19 verse 11 and 12 and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords and i saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven come and gather your together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh 
two things to know about Satan is his location and his appearance. The Bible is clear, Satan is not locked up in hell. Satan is not in chains of darkness. The Bible is clear, Satan is on this earth. Not only is he on this earth, he is the God of this earth. 1 Peter 5 verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Hollywood is doing the devil's work. In every film, you always see the devil in hell with a pitchfork, raising the temperature there. That's not true. He is on this earth looking for people to go after. Two, his appearance. When Satan approaches someone, he comes as an angel of light. He presents his idea as good and upright. And that's exactly what he did with Eve. This is the sinister and seductive nature of deception. People think that Satan can be seen in people fornicating or people committing adultery or drunkenness. No, that is the area of the flesh. The devil is more subtle than that. The devil is a liar and deceiver. Have you ever noticed how powerful one lie is? One lie can ruin a person's life. There are people in prison cells wasting away their lives right now because of one lie. It is a sobering thought, the number of marriages that have been destroyed by one lie. Lives have been destroyed by one lie and the most sobering thought is that there are people in hell today because they have believed in one lie of the devil. If you look at all the false prophets today in the world, they use the same approach. They tell you things from the Bible and they add a hint of a lie. If you want to counter them, they will point out the scripture they used. These things have been going on for a long time now and it has and still is affecting a lot of people. They twist the scriptures. Look at some of the churches that are admired and popular in the world and you will realize that the people there have been deceived. They are being deceived constantly and they are kept under the bondage of deceit. They genuinely believe that they are listening to the truth, but they are in danger. That is why deception is so evil. People who are being deceived do not know they are being deceived. This is why you can see people attending quote-unquote churches that you can see are clearly not in line with scripture. But the people attending that church can't see it. The doctrine of Christology is the most important doctrine. There is no other doctrine more important than the doctrine of Jesus Christ and who Jesus Christ is to you. If you have this doctrine of Christ incorrect, you are in error. Because the truth is, there are so many doctrines of Jesus Christ. Even different religions that have nothing to do with Christianity will say they believe in Jesus Christ. This is a big topic, but I will only skim over it. Matthew 24 verse 24 for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall shew great signs and wonders insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. If we check some other versions of this verse, they used the word Messiah. The word Messiah means the anointed one or the Holy One who is to take the role of a prophet or deliver people. The Messiah can also be called the Savior. Jesus was saying there will be many people claiming to be the Savior. Just because someone says they believe in Jesus Christ the Messiah 
does not mean they believe in the Jesus Christ of this Bible. Because there is a trend of people believing that Jesus is the Messiah, but not the Son of God. And that is deceptive. Do you see the deception? The truth is there that Jesus is the Messiah, but the deception is that he is not the Son of God. The closer a lie is to the truth, the more dangerous it is. And this is exactly what you need to understand about Satan. He is subtle in his deception. Let me give you some practical examples of false doctrines sponsored by Satan. Doctrine 1. I believe that Jesus is an amazing prophet and I follow his teachings. But I don't believe he himself is God. Look at how good that statement sounds in comparison to I don't believe in Jesus at all. Believing in either statement will still leave you in hell. But one statement acknowledges that Jesus was a prophet and also acknowledges his teachings, but then goes on to deny his deity. Jesus Christ is God. The fact is this, there are a lot of Jesus Christs out there, and Satan has no problem with you believing in Jesus and going to church, as long as the Jesus you believe in is not the Jesus of this Bible. The Bible warned us, never trust an angel who does this. In the year we live in, there is a rise in people claiming to have received dreams from God dreams from God with special instructions for themselves or for others. Whenever you hear someone state they had a dream from God, we need to be careful. We do. The truth is, dreams can be self-induced or even satanically inspired. Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 25 through 28. I have heard what the prophets say who prophesy lies in my name. They say, I had a dream. I had a dream. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy the delusions of their own minds? They think the dreams they tell one another will make my people forget my name, just as their ancestors forgot my name through Baal worship. Let the prophet who has a dream recount the dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord. I have seen many people speak of how their first curiosity in Christ and the Bible came through a dream, but it was the Word of God that finally brought them to the Savior. Typically, I have seen this among people who are heavily involved in other religions, and their first interest in Christ comes after a dream or an encounter. However, the common theme with these situations is that ultimately, it is these encounters that drove these people to the Word of God. And the word of God is what brought them to the realization that Jesus is Lord and King. God is sovereign and can use dreams to accomplish his will if there are other means available. But his normal way to communicate is through the spirit teaching the word of God. We as the body of Christ need to be careful when we are listening to people state they had a vision or a dream from God, particularly when these dreams or visions state extracurricular things to what is in the Bible, Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 25 through 28, gives us an instance where quote unquote prophets were lying and prophesying the delusions of their own minds. Allow me to be clear, God is sovereign and we cannot place him in a box and say God can do this and not do that. That is not our place to say. However, it is our duty to be discerning and to test the spirit behind messages. First and foremost, what you need to know is that everything you require is in the Word of God. The Bible has all you need to know. The Bible is our highest reference point. It is the anchor to our soul. The Bible is our roots and guide. And above all, we should refer to the Bible. We must test every spirit. The Bible is clear. The Holy Spirit distributes spiritual gifts according to the sovereignty of God 
and in accordance with his plan to edify the body of Christ. Spiritual gifts will be distributed differently, but the gift of discernment is a gift that the Holy Spirit will give to every Christian. Every born-again believer has a certain amount of discernment, which increases as the believer matures in the Spirit. As a believer grows in maturity, their ability to discern spirits will increase. You see, the Bible is a spiritual book, and the one and only person who introduces a child of God into the spirit world and to understand spiritual things is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one. The Bible states in John chapter 14, verse 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us the ability to learn about the Bible, and this is so important when it comes to discerning spirits, because any spirit that contradicts the Word of God is not of God. Whether it may be the most beautiful angel, or whether it may be a man or a woman standing on a pulpit, anything that deviates from the words in this book is not of God. The Bible says it so clearly, Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 through 9, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so I now say again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. The Bible warned us, never trust an angel who preaches another gospel other than the one that has been preached. Do you know that actual religions have been started based on an individual claiming they have been visited by angels? And these angels came to them with divine revelation preaching another gospel. I believe these visitations fall into one of three categories. Category one. As stated by the prophet Jeremiah, these dreams and visions are delusions of their own minds. Category two, these dreams and visions could just be made up lies. Category three, these visions could even be true from an angel that is not of God. Allow me to be clear, I firmly believe that people can interact and see angels today. That is true and scriptural. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. In the book of Revelation, angels will be seen in Earth's atmosphere. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through 13, angels are real, and they play a real part in the life of God's children. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? However, an angel from God will not come seeking to be worshipped or attempting to preach another gospel message. When you hear people who state, I had this vision, I had that vision, I had this dream, I had that dream, be careful. Don't just accept everything. Those experiences for some people can be self-induced or even satanically inspired. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. This is the devil's greatest weapon, deception. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20 through 21. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. We are to test the spirit beyond what people say in whatever situation. Test the spirit when someone is preaching. When someone is interpreting the word of God, test the spirit. We as children of God are to be discerning hearers and readers of all messages. This is a command to quote test the spirits or quote test all things. The Bible warns of a thing called false prophets. The Bible warns of, quote, wolves in sheep's clothing that try to lead Christians astray. The Bible warns us 
of the devil's counterfeit. The greatest threat of the church today is not the sin and immorality of this world. Sin and immorality has been rampant in humanity as far back as the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The greatest threat to the church today is not on the outside, but on the inside of the church. Acts chapter 20, verse 29 through 30. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. The greatest threat to the church today it's not on the outside, but on the inside of the church. This is a serious issue, a serious issue we all need to be aware of. As I previously stated, do you know that actual religions have been started based on an individual claiming they have been visited by angels? Millions are being led astray because one man claims he saw and heard from an angel. Deception is real and deception is not a joke. What you need to know about false teachers and wolves in sheep clothing, a lot of what they say is true and correct. So you may hear a Bible verse here and a Bible verse there, but it is truth mixed with lies. That is why false teachings can sometimes go under the radar. Once again, a vision or dream or an encounter can be self-induced or even satanically inspired. As the body of Christ, let us not just accept everything that is said or proclaimed. Let us test it. Our job is to test the spirits carefully. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So, what is it to test the spirit? The test is to compare what is being taught or said with the clear teaching of the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Your reference point is not a supernatural visitation. Your reference point is not a dream that you had. Your reference point is not your favorite pastor. Your reference point is not your favorite YouTube channel. No, your reference point is the Bible. Therefore, the way to test the spirits is to see if what is being taught is in line with the clear teaching of scripture.